Hey guys, I'm Angelo Montilla, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to add stunning animations to a digital publishing project using Adobe InDesign. Follow along in this lesson and learn how to add animation behind a subject in an image, use the timing panel to paste and play animations together, and export the project as an EPUB fixed layout format to view it in Apple Books. So let's jump right into this lesson and start creating. All right, let's get started. The first step is opening the InDesign document that I've provided to you. You can find that in the lesson download folder. Now I've left some space at the top here, and this is where we'll add our main image and use the object layer options to turn on and off layers in InDesign so we can add animation behind our subject while maintaining the background. You'll see what I mean in just a second. Now to understand how this works, I'm going to jump into Photoshop and I have an image here that I've licensed previously. I'll leave a link in the description below to this image where you can license it or download a preview version of it and use the same methods that I'm doing here. So we want to access the layers panel and you can see there's the image just called background. I'm going to right click it and choose duplicate layer and let's call this main image. Okay. So main image and then background is fine. Now what I want to do is grab any of your selection tools, one that you're comfortable in using. I typically use the quick selection tool. So here it is here. It's the third, sorry, fourth tool from the top. Go ahead and click that. Now before starting to select the subject, I'm going to just click on the select subject button up here and Photoshop does its thing to detect the edges in my subject and it does a pretty good job. So if you want to refine those edges, just click select mask and then you can use your, let me zoom in here and you can see that I'm on the third tool here. It's called the brush tool and it works just like the brush tool would in the regular Photoshop interface. And you can paint around the edges, hold your um, option key down. So if you want to add to the selection, you're in the positive brush. If you want to remove from the selection, hold your option key down and you can remove. This looks pretty good. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Plus we're going to be duplicating the pixels from the background. So it's not as important to refine the edges as much as it would if it was a, just a clean background, if that makes sense. Okay. So I'm just going to click okay. And next go back to your layers panel. And again, you're on the main image layer and down below here, let's just click the add layer mask. Now you can see nothing happened because we have to turn off the background layer in order to see that in action. So there it is with the background and there it is without the background. So this will allow us when we go back to InDesign to add animation behind the subject while still maintaining the original background. You would go ahead and save this as a Photoshop document or a PSD file. I've done that previously, so I'm going to jump right back into InDesign. And remember, I did leave some space to add that main image. So I'm going to bring that in now. And here it is in the loaded cursor. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner, hold shift and drag out the image just like that. And just to ensure that it's the right size, I'm going to right click, go to fitting and then fill frame proportionally. Now I do want to bump this up ever so slightly. So option command, that would be alt control on windows and greater than maybe a couple only because I want to bring my subject to the left a bit here just so I can add the text in later on and I'm going to test to see if I have enough space. This is all the content we'll be adding. So let's bring it over like so. I think that leaves us enough space. So I'm going to bring that back. Perfect. So the next step is creating another copy of this image. I'm going to go up to edit copy and then edit paste in place. And what that does is just creates another copy on top of the original version. The only difference here is I'm going to right click that top version, go to object layer options and turn the background layer off the top version. Click OK and have a look. I'm going to move this top version and you can see that the original photo with the background maintained is still there, but we have a version in front that does not have the background. So I'm going to hit command Z and now we can add the rectangle shape that will be animated behind our subject. To do that, just click on the rectangle frame tool, 
and let's draw out a frame that goes from the left edge of the page to the right, something like that. And let's go to the swatches panel and you'll see that there's two colors that I've provided there. One is called brochure orange. Give that frame, that rectangle shape, an orange fill. Now we want to send this behind our subject and the easiest way of doing that is holding command and left square bracket. You could also go up to object, arrange and send backward. That just sends it a step backward and not all the way to the back. And of course you can go to the layers panel and just sandwich that rectangle shape in between the two PSD images as you see there. Great, I also wanna give this an opacity of about 70%, just so we can see through that shape a bit and look into our background a little bit more. I'm also gonna move this shape up just a bit, so I'm gonna hold my shift key and up arrow, something like that works. And now I can take this content, the facts and figures, and let's move it to the right of our subject. Again, let's bring that to the front, shift command, right square bracket, or you can go to object, arrange, bring to front. Good. Now I have some more content to the left, which is just a quote from this CEO. I'm gonna move that to the left of her and shift command, and this will be right square bracket to bring it to the front. Let's move it down just a bit. And I have a quote symbol here, which I'm gonna place just above that, just to let people know that that's a quote from this woman or the subject. And again, I'm gonna do shift command, right square bracket. Good, now what I could do is alter the image or position it a little bit more in between. I'm just gonna move her to the right just a bit. Something like that will work. Again, I have both of them selected and then just grab the handles and snap them back in place to the page. So the idea here is to build the animation around your main subject. Now that we have all the content in place, we can go ahead and start adding the animation. Go up to Window, Interactive, and then click the Animation panel to open that. I already have mine open, so I'm just gonna tear it off here. And what we wanna do is start with the main shape. Now look at this, I'm trying to click that shape and I can't get to it. You can either lock this top layer, go to the Layers panel, and lock it, this way you can click on that. Or if you don't wanna lock it, to access that shape, just hold your command or control on Windows and click until you get to that shape. So whatever works best for you. So let's go ahead and add a preset of fly in from left. And you can see there's the motion path, it's showing me it's gonna come in from the left. Now there's a couple things I wanna do to this I wanna change the duration of it. So I want it to come in at 0.5 seconds and I want it to not fade in. So in the opacity, choose none. And then I also wanna hide it until it's animated. I also wanna click on the motion path. So click on it once and drag out the left handle out into the pasteboard so that the animation is traveling from a further distance. So I'll click on that shape again, and you can see that the, the motion path is showing me that it's gonna start here, and it'll travel, and it'll end, the animation will end right there. So let's have a look. If I click on the EPUB preview, this is how that animation will appear, and that's a good speed. That's exactly what I want there. I'll show you again. If I hit play, there it is, perfect. So next, let's click on the by the numbers title, and this will have a preset of fly in from the right. So I want it to come in from the opposite direction. Again, to remain consistent, let's do 0.5 seconds, and there will not be a fade in, and I do wanna hide this until animated. Let's click on the 25%, this is the first fact figure here, 25% increase in steel production. Now these are grouped. And that's what you want. You want the 25% the and then the little text element information piece to be grouped together. This way it'll animate together and you can see it comes in as a group. I simply want this to fade in and let's call this 25% animation, okay? And again, 0 0.5 seconds. We want this to remain consistent with the other duration. And because this is a fade in, that's what I want it to do. I want it to fade in. Next, let's do this 1.1 million, and it's the same thing, fade in, 
and let's call this 1.1 M animation. Good. And again, all of these are all on page load. So that's exactly what we want. The duration is 0.5 seconds and it will fade in. Let's click on 71 million. Same thing, fly or fade in. And this is 71M animation. Good. The duration here again is 0.5 and it will fade in. By the way, you can go ahead and add animation at the same time if it's the same animation. So you could click on all of these and then do fly or fade in. And then you would just have to go back in and rename them. Okay. So let's click this one here and do fade in with a 0.5 second duration and then everything else looks good. So here's something to remember that the animations will actually appear in the order that you set them. So we did the rectangle first. The second one will be the main title. Then all these information bits will come in. So let's test it out and see how it looks. I'm going to click on the EPUB preview. The shape comes in, the title, and then each information piece comes in afterwards in the order that we set them. So we have a couple more to go. Next will be this quote. And I want this to fly in from left as well. And again, this will be 0.5, no fade in and hidden until animated. Let's call this one simply quote. Good. And we have one more here. It's actually the quote symbol and it's already called that quote symbol. This will fly in from the top. Okay. And this will also be 0.5 and hidden until animated and not fade in. I also want this quote symbol to be about 30%. So I'm just going to do that opacity set to 30%. Now let's have a look and see how that all appears in the order. So we have our shape, the title, each information piece, the quote, and then the symbol. One more time. Shape, title, information pieces, quote, and then the quote symbol. Now, what if I wanted to slow down the animation? You may have noticed everything came in a little bit too quickly. This is where the timing panel comes into action. So you can see here, I have my timing panel. You can access it in the same area, window, interactive, timing. I'm gonna tear it off and group it with the animation panel because those two go hand in hand. Have a look, all the animation that we set in this document is recorded here. So we have rectangle, which I'm gonna go in and rename that. I'm gonna click on that animation and let's call this main shape. And if I click back on timing panel, you can see that's already been updated. So I have main shape by the numbers and then everything else. I have one called group here. What is that? That's probably this last one. I'll go in and let's rename that to 80K animation. Again, go back to your timing panel and you can see that's been updated as well. So just as a reminder, this is all set in the order that we set the animation. But again, what if I want to slow this down? These information pieces probably came in a little too fast. Same with the main title. First off, I want to click on the main shape and I want to add a one second delay so that when a viewer opens this document or views it online or EPUB, it's not coming in the minute the document opens. So I can open the document, consume it for a second or even two seconds and have that animation come in after just so that that is not missed on page load. So that's a good one second is a good setting there. And then what if I want to click on 25% hold my command key, click on the other information bits and let's add a 0.25 second delay to all four of those. Let's have a look now. If I click on the EPUB preview, you saw that little delay and then those information pieces come in at a much more comfortable pace because we added that 0.25 second delay. You could try 0.5 second. That would just add a little bit more time in between, but it's something that you're going to have to play with and experiment with in order to see how your animations will play out. I do like that a little bit more as well. And then as a last step, let's click on quotes and quote symbol, hold your command key, click both of them. 
And then down below in the right hand corner, there's this icon called play together. So we can play those two at the same time to even condense our animation a little bit more. Let's have a look to test that out. You can see the information pieces come in at a comfortable pace and have a look at that last bit. We have the quote symbol and the quote come in at the same time. One more time here. Shape, information pieces, and then those quote symbol and the quote come in together. As a last step, I'm gonna show you how to export this as an EPUB fixed layout, and I'll show you how it appears on an iPad. I'm gonna make my way up to File, Export, and in the Format File dropdown, choose EPUB fixed layout. I'm gonna rename this Company Brochure. I'm gonna click Save. In the EPUB fixed layout export options, there are some settings that you can look through. I'm gonna leave everything on the default. You would hit OK. I'm gonna hit Cancel because I've already created one and let's view it in an iPad. All right, I've opened the project in Apple Books on my iPad. You can see I have a cover page here, but I'm gonna to swipe to the left to see all the animation that we applied to this page with the shape, the title, the info pieces that come in at a nicer pace. And then you can see at the very end, was the quote symbol and the quote. I really hope you enjoyed these tips and tricks on how to add stunning animations to a digital publishing project using Adobe InDesign. If you found this video helpful, leave a like or comment below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to get notified when new videos are released. If you'd like to learn more about digital publishing and interactivity in Adobe InDesign, check out this playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.